Hello everyone, my name is Caden Knight from Hide and Seek and welcome to a brand new video. Grab your snacks, grab some popcorn, get comfy, get a blanket, the usual, right? But before we hop in, understand that this is actually going to be different. We're not doing a case, but rather we're doing a movie review. Uh, it's of the movie featuring Zac Efron is Ted Bundy. It is extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile. It's, it's one that I saw recently and frankly i feel it's worth the review this movie came out about a year ago i believe in 2019 but my goodness gracious is it worth talking about uh, i think this one definitely needs needs to be out there or someone needs to speak on it because i oh <laughs> enough of my blabbering let's just hop in now before i go too much in the movie i want you to understand that this one is going to be a little bit of a looser feel um, I haven't really scripted too heavily on this one. A lot of it is mostly going to be off the cuff, mainly because I just kind of want to talk about my thoughts on the movie, rather than just go by a play-by-play. -play. Look, I'm not a movie critic, alright? I don't plan on being a movie critic in the future. I just want to talk about this film to all of you guys. So, don't expect anything too crazy. Don't expect me to go and like an in-depth analysis saying, well, this frame could have been removed. It would have made the movie so much better. But, you know, I'm not going to be too ridiculous about it. Also, spoiler alert. Just just throwing that throwing that out there. So if you, if you don't want me talking about the movie, why are you watching a movie review? But anyway, let's get back to it. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, Zac Efron stole the show uh lily collins she played uh liz kendall um bundy's fiance uh god it, it was it was so whew, it's so well done seeing how liz over the movie just deteriorates under bundy's control how obsessed she gets with him how much bundy is just in her head it was insane to see and i loved i loved it i loved watching just the the two interact anytime they were on screen because bundy is so manipulative and that is what zach efron did did an amazing job with he played a very manipulative gross and disgusting character character person rather he was awesome he he stole the show that was an amazing performance done by zach there's nothing else that i can say except for just amazing he did an awesome job and i feel just Watching this movie for Zach, Zach Efron is is worth it enough as it is. His performance is amazing. There's honestly nothing that I could say that was like, well, he could improve on this. I think no, that was Ted Bundy. What I was watching was Ted Bundy. That it was it was amazing. I loved it. One of my uh, few complaints um, that I have for the film is definitely the pacing. That was probably the biggest thing that really like turned me off or kept me out of the movie in some of the cases of it was just some things they would spend 10 minutes on, five minutes on. And you could tell that they wanted to spend a little time on it because there was very quick cuts, very jumpy, very fast. It's as if they didn't want to reach like a two, the two hour mark. This movie lasts for an hour and 50 minutes. It's like they didn't want to reach the two hours and it's like, well, no, we kind of need some of the context for this. Um, but I also believe this might play into the fact that the movie doesn't directly show you that Bundy's a bad guy. It doesn't. He, he's obviously, you know, if someone didn't know who Bundy was at all, and then you show them this film, they might say, oh, well, I mean, they might just really have the wrong dude. And then, you know, at the very end of the film, they kind of reveal with the ping hitting of this one. Uh, one of his victims with this crowbar that you know he did do it it's kind of obvious that he has done it just point blank period but i do believe that the film was trying to portray it as if he didn't do anything and that this all was just one giant misunderstanding if, if that's what the film was trying to do then i guess that isn't that kind of a uh, dilutes my um complaint in a way because the pacing in my opinion just feels way too quick at moments there isn't a lot of talk on a bunch of the build-up you can tell they wanted to get to one scene, and that was the Florida trial. The one with, that was, that was televised, you know? Uh, I, I could tell that they were trying to get to that one, because that's where most of the time was spent. That's where most of the talking was. That's where most of the development was. That's where most of, like, the love triangle BS came in. It was, it was mainly just, oh, love triangle. Um, 
I could just tell that they were wanting to get to the Florida trial more than elaborate on any of the other things that had happened beforehand. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that, it's just that they did it way too quickly. There's no problems with stretching a movie out to two hours and 20 minutes, two hours and 30 minutes. It would have just been nice to have some more understanding leading into certain things. It seems like they just did it really quickly. Now, I'm not going to cry myself to sleep over something as little as this. I still enjoyed the movie. It didn't take me out fully and I was like, oh, well, this is stupid now. But I just feel that that would have made the movie a little bit better if the pacing was a little more solid. Now, <laughs> I think this just might be a me thing, but I feel casting Jim Parsons, the dude from Big Bang Theory, as Larry Simpson, the dude who is the lawyer in the Florida trial. <laughs> I feel like I don't want to say it was a bad choice, but like any time I saw him come on screen, I just said to myself, Bazinga. And I don't even like Big Bang Theory. I don't even like that show. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It's definitely not a bad thing, but I, I just, I just, I can't. Ridiculous, I know, but I just, I don't know. I don't know who else could have played him better, but I just, I just feel, <laughs> I just feel it was a funny choice. I feel the highlight of the entirety of the film was the trial in Florida. Um, I can maybe tell why the movie was trying to rush to it, because I can tell that's when most of the actors were just in it. Um, a lot of the scenes are very accurate, very accurate to um, the real life things that it's trying to portray. Uh, like, it even goes down to just like the littlest detail of just him, of, of, of Bundy, like, pointing his finger at the judge, and the judge is like, don't you wave your finger at me, young man. Like, it was relatively accurate, and I enjoyed seeing it. I loved it. Immersive. It was very intense. It was, it was awesome, though. I loved it. I loved it. I kind of want to piggyback off the portrayal side of things. Um, a lot of people disliked this movie. They disliked it because they wanted to see, like, a more raw version of Bundy, and frankly, I feel that isn't a fair criticism. Now, I'm going to elaborate on this, because here's the thing. Bundy was only raw and visceral and stuff like that when he eventually got to his victims. Before that, he was partying it up, he was smooth talking to ladies, he was a very smooth guy. That's what made him so scary, is that in the 70s and stuff like that, it was like a common belief that you could just, you could look at a serial killer and you, you'll, you'll know, you'll know, you'll, you'll, you'll see him. Not with Bundy. Bundy knew how to smooth talk his way out of basically almost anything. That's what made Bundy so scary. That's what made him get so many victims, is that he smooth talked his way out of a lot of things, out of many things. So... Having this very charismatic Bundy is true, is true to how he was. There are um, very minimal scenes that show Bundy getting like frustrated or upset and stuff like that. Like there's a scene where he gets upset at Carol Ann. There's the final scene um, when he's talking with Liz. And then there's the final, final scene when it shows him attacking a victim. And that's as visceral as it shows him. And I feel that was perfect. Because here's the thing, if you want to see a raw Bundy, you're at the wrong film. Watch a documentary where it'll tell you all the heinous and disgusting acts that he did. This movie is trying to portray him in, the, in, in, in a way that makes him seem human. There are many scenes where I had to tell myself, do not feel sympathy. You can't feel sympathy. There's a scene when... Um, Liz's daughter draws um, Bundy like a little shark, and when he's awaiting his trial in Florida, he has it put up on the wall, and uh, the sheriff walks in and basically just tears it right in front of Bundy, and you can see that it really affects him. And I remember sitting there feeling like, oh man, that's so sad. And I'm like, wait, no, I can't, you can't feel bad for this dude. You can't feel bad for this dude. And that's what the movie wants. The movie wants you to get the more humanistic side of him. They want you to get, they want to get in your head in a way. And I feel that was done perfectly. 
So I feel the criticism of saying that they wanted a more raw and visceral Bundy is is fine, but that was already a pre-made assumption before you went into the film, saying, "Oh man, I'm gonna go in here and I want to I want I want to see this," and it's like, well, 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 no. You didn't get that, you got this, appreciate what you got. Because if they had showed the raw side of Bundy, it wouldn't have made the other scenes as impactful. There was a reason why they did what they did. So, be appreciative of what you got. <laughs> the ending was amazing. Honestly, I feel the closer to this film was just so good. Basically, it's been like 10 years. Bundy is awaiting death. Uh, Liz decides to come and visit him after a very long time. It's been literally a full 10 years before they even like exchange notes, even called anymore. So they both get into the same room. They're talking over like the little jail phones and stuff like that. You got like the pane of glass right in front of you. In the middle of the film, Liz received an envelope. It was, it was one from Detective Fisher. I believe he was one of the Colorado detectives. Basically, what was inside there was damning evidence of what Bundy had done. One being a picture of a girl's head sliced off. So the reason I mentioned this envelope is because she brings it to the jail room when she's talking with Bundy. And she's practically begging him to just release her. She said something along the lines of, you've had your hand around my neck for years, release me. And he's, and of course, Bundy being Bundy is like, I didn't do any of these things. I would never do, I could, you know, I would never do any of these crimes, right? And then she just like, bam, slams the picture onto the glass and it's the, the headless girl. And she's like, what happened to her head, Bundy? What happened? And he's like, well, animals might have, and she's like, no, what happened? Release me, free me. And then some condensation at the bottom of the, glass he writes out the word hacksaw oh god I, I i can't i can't say it enough but like i remember when i first watched that movie like i had goosebumps all over me i was like oh weird weird uh. um something that's actually pretty cool as well uh so i saw this in a comment is that you notice that liz is actually wearing an orange like dress-ish thing? Outfit. We're going with outfit. Uh, Liz is wearing an orange outfit, and a lot of people seem to connect this to the idea that, you know, prisoners will wear, like, orange jumpsuits and stuff like that when they're in jail, in prison, whatever. A lot of people connect this to the idea that she was basically prisoner to Bundy, with the whole idea of, you know, release me, you've had your hand around my neck for years, release me, I want to be free. A, a lot of people seem to connect it to the idea that it's symbolic and, and that she wants freedom, she wants to leave, she wants to get out of Bundy's grasp. And if that was intentional, awesome, because that's sick. That's really, really cool. I dug it. I thought that was sick. <laughs> Overall, this movie was awesome it was great i feel the portrayal of bundy was amazing a lot of the other people that were involved within the bundy case was good it was all really well done uh this had a star-studded cast amazing appearances from other bits of celebrities as well i'm pretty sure even james headfield from metallica was in it it's awesome it's definitely 100 percent worth the watch please watch this movie it's it's awesome the portrayal of bundy is great cinematography is great music choice is amazing the scenes are awesome it's so good it's so good if you have not seen it definitely watch it ladies and gentlemen it's it's worth it i promise you and that brings us to the end of the movie review of extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile uh i didn't expect this movie to be that good in all honesty when I was first looking at reviews and such, a lot of critics were just hammering this film, like really hard. And I was like, wow, okay, a Ted Bundy film. I thought it was going to be really cool, but you know, you often have to form your own opinions yourself. So I just went in there, watched it, and I liked it. It was really good. So if you enjoyed the review and liked a lot of the things that I said, definitely give it a watch. It's on Netflix if you have that. Uh, if you don't, there's other options out there. I'm not going to say them out loud, but there are more uh, 
options on the internet. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the video. If you liked it, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't dislike, let me know what I can improve on next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.